So, so one that comes to mind immediately in the news this week is Kamala Harris. So, so you've been a leader for a long time. Yeah. I, again, you know how I feel about her politics, but I, I'm talking specifically about what leaders should be doing, and you know what you should be doing. If you serve the United States Senate, you've reached a level of leadership that you understand what need, what you should, what you should be doing, and what you need to do. And as the vice president, she was basically made. I'm kind of making this up. She's kind of been made the border czar. Sure. And that was impressed upon her by President Biden. Czar with the T or a C? Yes. Okay. okay. So now, for it's been I don't know how long. She hasn't even gone to the border. Yeah. What I am saying is that if someone puts you in charge of something, at a minimum, you go get eyes on it immediately. Yeah. At a minimum, that's what that's what you do. Yeah. And so, by literally months going, days and months and weeks passing, without without literally you going to just I don't know, yeah. look at it, go talk to the border. I, I don't care what it looks like politically to you. I don't care what CNN or Fox or anybody else might say about it. I don't care. Just go do your job. You were put in charge of something. So go be in charge of it. Yeah. The American people in general are going to respect that no matter what side you're on. Yeah. Don't downplay it. Don't upplay it. Go fix the problem. Yeah. Well, it, show up. And, and clearly <clears throat> there is one if the president puts you in charge of something. Well, there's clearly a problem. So there's clearly a problem. Yeah. I mean, and once again, to the level at which we elevate things, I mean, it, it doesn't take the vice president of the United States to oversee something if there's no issue. That <laughs> Yes. Right. We recognize that there's an issue. Yeah. When I was when I was in business school, there was uh, a case that we did and there was a protagonist for this case. It was basically the guy who had developed the OnStar system in cars. Mm -hmm. OK. And there was a time at which Apple was looking to purchase this technology. And so Steve Jobs flew this guy out to talk to him about purchasing this technology. And in typical jobs fashion he got all mad flustered and was 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 you know causing a scene and he says ah you can just get out of here we don't need your technology we can do it somewhere else and the guy smiled and he left and he said it was one of the best days of my life it's like do you know why and i'm sitting here like why because steve jobs just yelled at you i don't get it yeah it's like no he didn't fly me out here on a private jet to tell me i'm an idiot of course not so he knew you knew you he had flew, something. He flew me out here because he, he, he knew he, he, he knew it was he had worth something. his time. He knew he knew we had something, and it's the same thing with the border. We could, it, if there is any indication that there are things that need to be resolved on their on our border, it's that the second highest public official in our entire government is overseeing the process of trying to make it better. Yeah, it's a big deal. It's a big deal. This is a signaling thing. And when you are signaled to be in charge of something, go be in charge. The number one things that that leaders do, leaders show up, man. Yeah. Leaders show up. Yep. It's the issue that we're having more broadly, I think, post COVID, uh, with pushes to work remote and things like that. There's certain jobs that you can do remotely, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And there will have to be a level of flexibility in the market as people continue to go back to work and continue to remake their careers. The people who are in the top job, the top seat, mm -hmm. you don't get to work remotely. Mm -hmm. Leaders got to be there. Yeah. Show up. Leaders show up. That's important. Yeah. Leaders lead. It's just that simple. Yeah. And, and I think a lot, a lot of times it's really hard because the external pressures that get put on us all the time. You know, you know how are we signaling? How does it look? Are we trying to downplay something? Are we trying to upplay something? Like, like there's so many factors that play a role in this. Like, like what's what's this faction going to say juxtaposed to what this faction is going to say? And like, I understand it gets complicated, and I understand that that somebody's going to be upset. You're going to piss off somebody. Always. That's a part of being a leader. Yeah. Part of being a leader is accepting the fact that you're going to piss somebody off. Sometimes it's going to be somebody that's on your team. Somebody's going to be some. Sometimes it's going to be somebody that's not on your team. Somebody's going to be upset. You cannot be like that tree in an empty field that just flaps with the wind, depending on how it blows you. You cannot do that. You can't be that person. Yeah. So I think even as simple as just saying, like, look, I'm going to go check this out. You're probably going to tick off some of the left. I'm sure you're going to tick off. I, I got it. You're go CNN is not going to want to report on this. And, oh, my gosh, she's now at the border. What's really happening? Lead. But once again, this goes back to so many of the conversations we have about 
making things that are fairly straightforward over politicized. Yeah. Yeah. This is this is the mass, right? And I say this all the time about now as things are continuing to open up in in Houston, my default now is to not have a mask on. If somebody tells me to have a mask on and I want to be there, then I'll put a mask on. This is your place of business. You are a private business. That's fine. If I don't like it, then I can leave. I don't have to be there. Yes. I can go somewhere else and spend my money. Actually, legally, they can't make and, you do it anymore. And way. that's fine. Well, cool. Yep. But even so, if somebody tells but me to even do that, so you'll I would still do, do it. it. You'll do it. Yeah. Because I'm not trying to be a contentious person. Mm -hmm. Right? It's like, okay, this is your place of business. You're more fine. Fine. Whatever. And and we try to make something over politicized that, that shouldn't be politicized. The idea that leaders show up is not a political statement. Yeah. It is a statement of fact, and it's a statement of expectations. Mm -hmm. Very good. I expect that somebody who leads and represents me will show up. Yeah. My kids play sports. My daughter's on swim team right now. My son plays baseball. As the co-head and leader of my household, it's important for me to show up to that mm -hmm. stuff. And they need to see you there. It's important. It's important to carve time out of your day to be there. Be there. Be attentive. That's the first thing in leadership. Not hard. People don't care what you know until they know that you care. The way that you show people that you care is by showing by up. By showing up. And we can throw darts on, there's people in cages and all these things going on at the border, yada, 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 yada. Well, let's go see it and make sure we have some eyes on it and understand what's going let's on. Let's show up. Yeah. It's not too much to ask, Brendan. No. It really isn't too much to ask. Yeah. And I don't want to bag I don't want to bag on her. I don't want to get on. I don't want to get on talk. I don't, there's no personal attacks. There's none of that. But that's not too much to ask. Well, and, and I think that's a, a beautiful point, even all of our candidates who were running for public office. Mm -hmm. They saw the issues that were going down the border. Yes, they did. You're running you're running for president? Get on down to the border. Show me how much you care about it. Mm -hmm. Don't talk about it. Be about it. This is this is this is this is for this is for leaders who we see more broadly and the type of leadership that we've been defaulted into accepting. Mm -hmm. We have issues going on. You want to know what it's like to, to to be deployed? Go to the ship and see the sailors. Go see it. Go to a combat zone. Go see it for yourself. Go to Afghanistan. Go to Iraq. Go see it for yourself. And we've and I, I would be the first to say that is for all of, of, of the presidents who have done that, right? Yeah. I love it when that happens. It's awesome. These guys just show up. It's awesome. Hey, you're serving. Thank you for being here. That's awesome. How do you think that makes the soldiers and sailors it's the feel best thing you could ever see when they in your wake life. up and they see the commander in chief on the ship? It's awesome. I don't care who it is, Bush, Obama, Clinton. Care. Awesome. That's why it's so special. No matter what you believe in the, uh, about their politics, why do you think you have these leaders that speak at commencements at the commencement ceremonies mm -hmm. of the service academy? They showed up. They're showing up. They're saying these people are willing to die for us. Yep. I can show up and give a speech. Mm -hmm. Show up. Mm -hmm. It's a good example that gets set too when that happens. You talk about instilling a, a, an, an esprit de corps in people's soul. You talk about generating some serious motivation to complete the mission, to complete their task. Just be a leader who shows up. And I just used a whole bunch of military jargon there. But, but it's actually applicable to everything. It really is. It's applicable, it's applicable to your job. It's applicable to your family. It's applicable to your friendships. Just showing up. 